Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Cameron, but you can call me Culinary Cameron. I'm a chef, and what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to take your home cooking to the next level. Today what I'm doing is I'm working with a cut called Osabuco. Now, Osabuco is a cross cut of the beef shank. Uh, it's a very cheap cut, it ranges from 10 to $15 a kilo, and it's something that is very underrated due to uh, the, the nature of it. It's really good slow cooked, and I'm gonna cook it today in a red wine and tomato sauce, and I'm gonna show you how you can do this easy and cheap. So, first thing we're gonna do, as always, is we're going to season our meat. As you can see here, we've got a bone, we've got the shin bone, it's full of marrow. That's uh, probably my favorite part with a lot of people is eating the marrow from the bones afterwards. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start preparing our vegetables because uh, that's what we're gonna cook it in. in. Two bowls. First up, potatoes. I'm using brushed potatoes, skin on ones today. Uh, as always, I love to keep the skin. I think the skin's full of so much flavor and nutrients. Uh, you'll never catch, rarely catch me throw it away. All I'm gonna do with these today is I'm going to cut them into nice wedges about that big and you'll see later, they'll come in a bit later, what we're gonna do with them. Just gonna go in the fridge till a little bit later. Next up is we're going to prepare the base for my sauce. So the base for my sauce, as always, is a mirepoix. Again, that's the French terminology uh, for carrot, onion, carrot, and celery. We're gonna dice that finely and then we're gonna fry that off before we add our osobuco. It's always important to use a nice sharp knife. As you can see, it just glides through nice and easily. This one might be a bit too sharp. When I cut anything, I roll my fingers back like that and I rest my knife hard up against it and then I just move my fingers back as a guide. That way my knife is always rested hard up against my fingers and I've got no chance of cutting it. It's the easiest and safest way to use a knife. So as you've probably noticed, the board's moving around. Underneath it, I've got a grip strip, which isn't doing its job. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn to the trusty old faithful trick of a wet chucks cloth. Um, Sometimes tradition is just better. Don't change what works. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Let's see how this goes. Sturdy. Next step, we're gonna cut the onion up. Same again, nice small dice. To do that, we take the ends off and peel it first. Ah, best way for an onion to not make you cry is always, always pick the knife with the thinnest blade possible. Thicker the blade, the more of the juice you're gonna spray and the more likely you're gonna cry. And if you breathe only through your mouth and not your nose, you won't cry. But that is something you'll learn over the career Ooh. of pick, of peeling many bags of, of onions. That's just gonna go into the bowl with the carrot. Last step we've got is the celery, but while I'm chopping the celery, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pan on here. I'm gonna preheat that so it's nice and hot when we're ready to go. Celery's all good to go. Got my osabuco now. I'm just gonna rub it down with some oil and some rosemary leaves, just for some flavor. Uh, Always with beef, good flavors, rosemary, thyme, just really rich, strong flavors uh, I like to use. One thing you'll notice is that I rarely season my meat with pepper before cooking. Always salt, never pepper. That's because pepper burns 
when you cook it. So that's why I like to leave pepper till the end. Handy tip there, just thought I'd throw that in. As always, the most important part of cooking is a good photo. You've always got to make sure you're flexing for the gram because if you don't put it on, how do they know you cooked it? Boom. So I've got my pan preheated now. I'm going to throw some oil in there and then I'm just going to start by putting the ossobuco pieces in and you hear a nice sizzle from them and that's what you want. All that juice, the oil, salt and the rosemary in there. I'm just going to leave that there for about two to three minutes before I flip it. I want to get some really nice colour on that before I turn it over. So I've just had a look at them, they're not quite ready to turn yet, but we're just going to leave them for a little bit longer. They'll be ready in a minute. Alright, so I can smell that's ready now. I'm going to start to turn. If you have a look here, we've got some nice colour on it. And that's what you want, that's just going to seal the flavours in. Next up, I'm just going to add my Miroquois in here, and just going to start cooking this. Lid goes on, and that's going to cook for a little bit, and then we're going to start adding some sauce. So that's been cooking for a couple of minutes now. First up, Red wine, beef stock, it's a couple of good glasses, maybe three, four hundred mils of red wine. And then I'm just going to finish that off with a can of tomatoes, cover that up and then that's going to go in the oven for about an hour to an hour and a half before we add our potatoes. Always keep a little bit extra beef stock because if it starts to dry out, depending on the temperature, how it's going, you can add more to it that way it doesn't go really dry. All right, so it's been an hour. I'm gonna go grab the ossobuco. I'm gonna bring it over here and add the potatoes and show you what we're looking at. Just taking the lid off here and as you can see, uh, the sauce is starting to cook down. It hasn't started thickening yet, but that's because we've kept the lid on. We've kept as much moisture in there as possible. What I'm gonna do now, just flip them over Bring out the potatoes I prepared earlier. Just gonna set them all in there. We want them to soak up as much of the liquid and juice as possible so they're full of flavor. Let's throw as many of them as I can get in there. And now for the last 30 to 45 minutes while these potatoes are cooking, I'm gonna leave the lid off and I just wanna get some nice color in all this and get that sauce to thicken. Gonna go back in the oven now, gonna set the timer for another 45 minutes and we'll pull it out and it'll just about be ready. All right, so our roast potatoes are nearly done. The ossobuco is nearly finished. So the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna make like a nice little crust sort of to go on top. Uh, and for that, I've got a lemon, I've got some parmesan and I've got some parsley that I've just grown in my garden. Um, when you grow, I suggest everyone get a herb garden at home. When you grow the herbs yourself, they've got so much more flavor, they smell so much better, and it just gives you a real connection to the food that you're cooking and uh, an active part of participation. Now, I just wanna cut this parsley really roughly. I use the stalks and all, I'm not really worried. And I'm just gonna put that in a bowl. Uh, I've got my lemon here. I just want all the zest off that. The zest of one lemon and then parmesan. I'm just gonna grate a nice amount of that into here. Mix that all together. And I'm gonna grab the ossobuco out and show you what we're gonna do. So this is my ossobuco now. As you see, the potatoes are nice and golden. We've got a really nice color on top of the meat there. Uh, that's just from taking the lid off and the sauce has really started to thicken. I'm just gonna take this here, sprinkle it over the top. And there we have it. And the last thing we want to do is we want to season it well with salt and pepper. Now, if I'm serving this, uh, it's something really rustic, really cool. I'm just going to put this in the middle of the table with a set of tongs and let everyone dig in. So I'm going to serve some of this up. Now, this is my home cooked Osabuka recipe. If you want to see more recipes like this, I suggest you like, share, subscribe to my channel and we'll be dropping new content every week with stuff like this.